Today on Hacktip, we are using some popular commands in TCP dump. This episode of Hacktip is brought to you by Atlassian. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I am Shannon Morris, and today we are checking out filtering with TCP dump. Now, if you followed along with Hacktip 142, you have TCP dump already installed, and you're running some simple, albeit legit, packet captures in your terminal window on a Linux machine. Now, this week, we are going to filter said captures, because who doesn't love filters in Wireshark and TCP dump? I do. I love them. Now let's say you only want to capture like X amount of packets. For this, and let's go over to my computer, we're going to type in TCP dump tech I space two for WLAN zero because remember if you can't type attack capital D, that will list out all your different interfaces and you can use the number instead of the interface name. Now after that, I want to type in tech C and I'm gonna just capture four packets. Let's make it quick. Okay, so that was easy, and that way you don't have to hit Control C or Control Z after waiting for your packets to finish. It's just gonna automatically exit after receiving that count of packets. Now, if you wanna capture just a specific protocol, you can also add that to the end of the command, like so, sudo tcp dump. Uh, we're gonna use tac i again with two, tac c with four lines. And we're going to use tack n to just choose ARP. So we want to collect ARP packets, nothing else. So basically what this does, remember tack n is to suppress host names and you can also use tack n to choose just one kind of packet that you want to search for. So you can type in tack n IP, tack n TCP, tack n ICMP, or tack n ARP, whatever you want. You can also filter by just a specific IP address. So for example, I could just search for this 10.73.31.70. It's going to be pretty boring because it's just a bunch of ARP requests, but it'll show me just that data for a source or a destination. So for example, I could type in src 10.73.31.70 for just that source of .70, or I could type in the same thing with dst for the destination. Now if you need to see the hex printout for some reason instead of regular human speak, you can do that with tack lowercase x. This is going to print the hex output for packets without the link level header. Tack xx will do the same thing but with the link level header. A tack with a capital X is going to print out the hex and the ASCII without link level and tack capital X capital hex will print hex, ASCII, and both the link level headers. Ah, so link level headers are expressed in the TCP man page. It just means that it's going to include OSI layer 2 information like MAC addresses in the TCP dump output. Uh, feel free to do that on your own time. We are going to check out a really, really cool explanation and example of what happens when you put in plain text passwords and usernames to a website and how you can actually sniff it yourself in TCP dump. But first, let's take a break and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. From genome mapping to renewable energy to space exploration or just planning your next team off-site, behind every great human achievement, there is a team. So this big question is how do you bring everybody together to build what's next? The solution with Atlassian. You can unleash your team's potential with Atlassian's collaboration software so you can work and communicate better together. You can assign, track, and manage tasks for any project, no matter how complex. That's the clarity of Jira. You can create and share content, you can organize results, you can bring team members up to speed with the flexibility of Confluence, or you can instant message and video chat with your team from any device with the freedom of HipChat. Lastly, and my favorite, is testing and reviewing and managing code in real time with the power of Bitbucket, which just had an update last week. Now Atlassian is helping teams in every single industry from startup to enterprise turn great ideas into reality. I've used HipChat to video conference with colleagues because they live all over the United States. I'm able to just log in, find my friend over in Ohio and chat with them and make sure everything's on key. You can go over to Atlassian.com to learn more and see how Jira, Confluence, HipChat, and Bitbucket give your team everything you need to organize, discuss, and complete shared work. That's Atlassian.com. Unleash the potential of your team and build what's next. 
We are back with more filter options. Now here are a couple of other really easy customizations that you can use to make your commands all the more better. So first off, you can use TAC TT or TAC 3Ts or TAC 4Ts or TAC 5Ts to make the timestamp look a little more readable or change it as described in the man page. So my favorite is probably going to be, let's see, TCP dump TAC, I'm gonna say 3Ts. And then we use TAC I and WLAN 0. And I can also use 4Ts to show me the date as well. And if you just really hate timestamps, you can also use 1T, and that's a lowercase t, to delete all of your timestamps. For something fun, you can write your capture to a file, and this is going to be using the TAC W option. And then you can read that same capture with TCP dump TAC R which will give you all that same info out of the PCAP. There we go. Now, if you don't want to include a type of packet, you can add not to your command. So for example, I could type in TCP dump TAC N TAC I WLAN zero, not TCP. So I would still get IP, ARP, I would get everything else, but it just would not show me TCP. You can also use grep alongside TCP dump like this. So I'll type in TCP dump, TAC capital A, TAC I, of course. And this is two or WLAN zero. I'm gonna pipe this to egrep, TAC I, colon, and we're gonna just find out what's going on online when I go to a plain text website and I type in my username and password. So we're gonna use pass, PWD, password, username, UN, PW, pass. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm gonna press enter and then I'm gonna go over to this website that I have open, which I know uses plain text passwords and usernames, and I'm just gonna type in a random login name and a really easy password, like one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's hit enter. Okay, there we go. That took a little while, but we finally got it. So if we scroll down all the way to the bottom, and luckily it's pretty much stopped after it found my username and password that I had put in. So it tells me right here in plain text, my username was snubs, and then it says password, VB login password hint, there is no password hint, uh, MD5, oh, so here it says MD5 password equals, and then it gives me this hash. So if I copy this hash, and just for clarity, my password was 123456, I'm gonna copy that, and I'm just gonna Google uh, MD5 hash decrypt. I'm gonna put in my hash and hit decrypt, and let's see if it is salted. This website is terrible. Oh, there it is, decrypted text, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have now proved to myself that the website that I was trying to log into is not salting these hashed passwords. Mm, delicious. They need some salt, some serious salt. That's bad. <laughs> but that is really cool because you can then find out which websites that you're going to that are letting you do plain text passwords and usernames. That's not really good if you can actually sniff out your own data. <sighs> That's about it for TCP Dump. You can go over to tcpdump.org for more information. And you can also print out this super handy dandy cheat sheet, which they put down in the document section. Check this out. Lots and lots of awesome filters that you can use with TCP Dump. That's so great. I would suggest printing that out and just sticking it on the wall next to your computer if you plan on using TCP Dump a bunch. All right, that is about it for my overview of TCP Dump. You can let me know what you think. You can always comment below or you can email us tips at hack5.org. If you're over on YouTube right now, you can subscribe YouTube.org youtube.com slash hack5, I almost said .org. <laughs> and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. We're building drones on Hack5, it's so much fun, check it out. And I will be there reminding you to trust your Technolust. Oh, that was terrible.